Before we get going with today's video, I just want to give a big shout out to the first video that I actually made in this series about DISH and how they would fail as a wireless national carrier. If you'd like to watch that before watching this one, or maybe watch it afterwards, I'll put a card either um, here or possibly here, uh, wherever it shows up. Check that out if you get a moment to do so. You know, we're doing part two of a series I wanted to do on DISH Network. For those that aren't aware, for those that have been following the story closely, DISH Network is going to be the next wireless carrier as so long as the proposed merger between T-Mobile and Sprint, which has been approved by the DOJ and the FCC, as long as that proceeds, you know, as it should, DISH will be the next fourth wireless carrier. Anyways, what I'm doing with these videos, the first one I did was why, five reasons, why DISH would fail as a wireless carrier. So this is kind of the answer to that. It's the other side of the coin. Uh, five reasons why DISH will succeed as a fourth wireless carrier. The feedback on that video was kind of mixed. Some people thought that my reasons were awful. Some people thought that the reasons were inaccurate and that I was making it seem like, you know, why would I want the merger if they were just going to fail as a fourth carrier? But again, I was just playing devil's advocate. I was looking at, you know, what would be some ways that they would fail. So what I don't want to do with this one is the same thing. If things shake out as they should, five reasons why Dish Network will succeed. So anyways, that's enough talk in terms of the introduction. Let's actually go ahead and get into the video. It starts right now. Five reasons why Dish Network is going to succeed as a national wireless carrier. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you guys my top five reasons. They're not in any particular order. They're not in any order of importance or magnitude. It's just five reasons why they're going to succeed. Reason number one, and reason number one is Dish has a lot of wireless spectrum. To be more specific, they have spent over $20 billion on it. It is valued over $30 billion, and they've got over 100 megahertz of it and take a look at the breakdown of the types of spectrum that they hold. So they've got some low band in the form of band 26, which is 800 megahertz spectrum, which they got out of the Sprint uh, merger, uh, merger concession from the T-Mobile and Sprint merger. Uh, this would be good for long range network operations, uh, giving them some extension and how their network can be connected to by customers. Another low band pre-existing spectrum that they have is 600 megahertz, and then they have 700 megahertz holdings. I believe they have 25 to 30 megahertz of the 600 and about 6 to 10 megahertz of the 700, which if you ask anybody, this is instant coverage. They would get the nation blanketed in this uh, type of spectrum very quickly and very easily. The reason why this is considered to be instant coverage is it offers excellent geographic range and offers in-building penetration. Usually the bigger problems that a network faces is people trying to get connected under those circumstances. Next, we have their mid-band spectrums that they hold. Uh, they've got AWS-1, AWS-3, AWS-4, as well as some AWS H-block spectrum. Uh, they're probably going to combine a lot of their AWS to band 66. This will give them great capacity. It'll offer great speeds and throughput. I, I also think when you think about the AWS uh, H-block, which they'll have in 5x5 five five blocks nationally, uh, they'll have... Uh, really nice flexibility with the spectrum. I think the application, how they use it in their network, is probably the best situation, especially because it will be future upgradable by software for 5G application. And with fifth generation networks just around the corner, it really is all about 5G, and that's probably going to be the most important spectrum for that application. And then, you know, this is kind of going to be their ace in the hole moving forward uh, to get the nation covered in, you know, large amounts of 5G. Lastly, to talk about their spectrum holdings is the millimeter wave type. This is a really high frequency type of spectrum. Uh, none that I could truly identify or locate uh, other than uh, they've got, I think, some in the 12 gigahertz range. Uh, I'm not sure how much they have nationally or if it's in certain cities. And I was also able to find a little bit of 29 to 30 gigahertz spectrum that they do own. I just don't think they have it nationally, which means in certain cities, you know, Dish Network could potentially roll out specifically some millimeter wave 5G. I just wanted to include that for accuracy purposes, but again, like I said, it's not going to dramatically affect or impact their network in any way. Next, we have reason number two, and that is DISH has a very sweet MVNO deal on the T-Mobile network, and they've got it for quite a while. 
deal itself is for seven years. And to be more specific, for the next three years, uh, they'll have full access, unfettered, unadulterated access to the new T-Mobile network. Uh, it does get less sweet as time goes on in a way. So in that situation, I think between years four and seven, uh, their access to the capacity of the T-Mobile network is going to start to decrease. So in that situation, you know, the network performance, the capacity of the network should be excellent during this time. In theory, uh, Dish could sign MVNO deals and probably make some money while operating on the new T-Mobile network. So because they'll have full access to the new T-Mobile network, that will give them access to the 5G network that T-Mobile is going to be building out. Uh, they'll be doing that through low band, mid band, and millimeter wave. Uh, that's band 71, band 66 LTE access, uh, band 41, 2.5 gigahertz from Sprint. I mean, they'll have access to everything. And cost-wise, Dish is going to be very profitable. It looks like they're going to be making some good money because this deal is going to be so good. And I think that excellent wholesale slash MVNO deal makes it that, you know, they're going to be pretty profitable and they'll be able to generate some revenue to get things going and building their own network. I wish I could actually speak to this topic a little bit more, but I haven't seen any official documentation. And I don't think there is anything in terms of official details on the actual MVNO deal. So I'm going to go ahead and wait for another video to kind of disclose those things if and when they become become available to the public. Next, we have reason number three, and this one is uh, Dish has all of Sprint's prepaid business. I mean, essentially everything. Uh, as a concession of the merger, they got everything on the prepaid side. So they've got 9.3 million customers out of the deal. That would be Sprint prepaid proper. That would be Boost Mobile and Virgin Mobile. Uh, I think it also includes all the MVNO deals that they had in place as well um, in terms of those prepaid sites. So uh, they're not starting from scratch. They've got a customer collection as of right now. Uh, this will allow them to stay competitive, uh, make growth in terms of prepaid market share. Next is number four, and that is Charlie Ergen. You guys probably recall that I had him as one of the reasons why Dish Network could fail. Well, he's also one of the reasons why they could succeed. And you're probably thinking that makes no sense. But here's why I think it does. He's just a really good businessman when it comes to fighting for his company. Uh, he's got a lot invested in the company. I'll get to more on that in a second. But, you know, he's, he's put his company in a position to be competitive. And he's built these concessions along with the DOJ, FCC, T-Mobile, and Sprint. And in this case, you know, you think about like, you know, the DOJ advocated for him and the FCC made agreements with him. All this is in place so that the company can operate and do well. I also think that the timing is kind of right. This seems to be the perfect opportunity to do this. Charlie Ergen has been trying to go wireless for a long time. I mean, this dates back several years. So in 2013, he tried to buy Sprint. I think he actually did put in like a formal offer to the company. Uh, he also tried to buy T-Mobile, although I don't think a formal offer was made, but he did try. And he also did attempt at a merger with DirecTV. And of course, that would have been positioning them again for more wireless opportunities. Uh, so the time is now and the time is ripe to strike. And I think Ergen, you know, showing that he really believes in the company, he just bought a half a million shares in the company that totaled $15.7 million. He's a very wealthy man. He has very deep pockets. This may be something to console shareholders, or it could be that he just feels like, you know, this is going to be the lowest point of the company. We're going to succeed and I'm going to make more and more money. So depending on how you look at it. To kind of wrap things up with Charlie Ergen, uh, the situation simply is that the, the actual business, uh, Dish Network as a, you know, a satellite TV provider, things are kind of falling apart for them. Uh, they're not profitable. There's no growth in the business. They just can't continue down that path. It's going to be a slow and ugly death. And they've been hemorrhaging customers for a long time. So this gets them into a new market segment, uh, gets them into a, I guess, a reinvigorated way to operate a business you know, using a different type of approach to this market. And I think, you know, it's just time for them to transition because their old business is failing. Fifth and final reason why Dish Network will succeed as a national wireless carrier, the FCC and DOJ concessions have built in checkpoints uh, that are realistic and I think prevent Dish from selling out without a true effort towards building out a national wireless network. So some of those things that are kind of built in place as checkpoints and restrictions, uh, no spectrum can be sold by Dish to any other company over the course of the next three years unless 
the DOJ and FCC approve it. Both would have to approve that sale. Another restriction or checkpoint that DISH has, 70% of the U.S. has to be covered in their 5G network within a few years. So we would be expecting this uh, 2022, 2023. And then that number the following year would spike up to 90%. So that means they've got to get things going pretty quickly and there's no time to lollygag. This time frame with all of these different restrictions and checkpoints should have them set up nicely to get off of the T-Mobile network at some time in the near future. Uh, we know that they've got a deal for seven years, but it does offer them some flexibility in transitioning to their own. And of course, they could be leasing on both sides of the company's operations from the T-Mobile MVNO side, and they could technically be doing it on their own. So as in a way they could kind of be double dipping. I also think that they'll do something in terms of bridging the networks together. I think that would be kind of interesting, kind of like what Google Fi is doing, where they have the, you know, the US cellular and they've got the T-Mobile and the Sprint deals operating on all three networks with network handoffs and things like that. I think that offers great flexibility as well as some new technology operations for customers that utilize DISH. Just think about the revenue that they could generate. They could have spectrum sharing deals. They could have network leasing MVNO deals in place, things that would make them very profitable. And of course, we know that that's one of the biggest problems that DISH is facing. They've got $10 billion needed to build out their new network and they don't have that fluid cash. So since they don't have it now, that opens up the opportunity of them getting those revenues and being able to front the money to build out. So generating the revenue on all those different types of deals, I think that's a specialty of what Charlie Ergen can do. Those are my top five reasons why I think DISH has the potential to succeed as a national wireless carrier. Again, those are mine. I could be wrong, I might be wrong, I probably am wrong, but I thought it would be fun to kind of play predictor and see what we could come up with as ideas as to what might help them succeed in the future. In the comments section below, go ahead and let me know what you think of my ideas, my top five reasons, Maybe you agree with some of it. Maybe you agree with none of it. Whatever the case may be, drop me a line in the comment section below. Give me your thoughts and opinions on this topic. I wanna to thank you all for taking the time to watch this video. Please do me a favor, go ahead and like this video and share it, helps the channel grow and gets the channel out there to the YouTube algorithm. And uh, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and ding that notification bell so you never miss an upload from the SMT. We've got the Discord server community as well as the Patreon page. I've got links in the description box below for those two communities. And if you would like to support SMT production here on the YouTube channel, there is a PayPal share link below in the description box. If you'd like to make a small or occasional donation here on the SMT YouTube channel, many thanks for those considerations in advance. That just about wraps up the video. Thank you again for watching. I am the SMT and I will catch you guys on the next one. Peace.